It's one year after the Lekki Toll Plaza shooting in Lagos, and the protesters are back on the streets for a memorial. We'll be discussing all that happened on this day a year ago. We will also have the lead counsel to the protesters here in Lagos. We will talk about the judicial panel. And as always, Off the Press uh, comes up today also to share with you major stories and making headlines across uh, the country this very interesting Wednesday morning uh, here on The Breakfast. With that, we say good morning and thanks for joining us on uh, this very, very beautiful Wednesday morning here, 20th of October, 2021. Uh, this is The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Kosao Gi Ogbawa. And I am Messi Boko. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Our conversations this morning are going to be, well, mostly centered around one particular event and, of course, uh, the build-up to what happened on this day um, in 2020, the Lekki Toll Gate shooting. And we'll be talking about that with, um, you know, the lead counsel to the end SARS protesters at the uh, Lagos uh, panel of inquiry. Um, he will be joining us sometime around 8 a.m. this morning. But before that, of course, we have Off the Press, where we get to share with you major stories making headlines across Nigeria uh, today. It uh, seems like it's going to be a rainy uh, morning in Lagos. It felt like I was a little drizzle on my way to work this morning. Yeah, I actually, we actually witnessed the rain in my zone uh, apparently last night. So, oh, yeah, uh, yes, it did. Yeah, because yes, it, it rained yesterday, and so we might also just rain sometime later. Still, I mean, I, I think I said it yesterday. It's still a little shocking. Uh, to see it raining that heavy um, in the month of October. And um, that's because, uh, let's just say that we're very close to, you know, it's a coastal city, so definitely you expect the rains, especially when you live around this particular zone. Let's see. Besides the rain, uh, there's, of course, a lot of other conversations, mostly centered around the NSARS protests, and that's our top trend in this morning. In the last uh, 20 days, uh, there have been online conversations uh, about a memorial and, of course, a remembrance of those people who lost their lives, you know, all through last year. And those who lost their lives, particularly during the protest uh, last year. It started, of course, in Delta State, where yet another person had been a victim of police brutality. And that eventually spurred, uh, you know, numerous conversations online, mostly on Twitter, um, that led to maybe the biggest protest Nigeria has seen in a very, very long time. Um, that eventually ended, somehow, some way on the streets on the 20th of October in 2020. Um, the conversations have centered mostly around the gains and, of course, the failure of government to actually do something and, and, and to um, show some level of accountability as to what happened in the month of October, all through the month of October last year. Um, not just on the 20th, and I think our conversations are going to be centered throughout the month of October last year um, and eventually on the, the night of the 20th of October 2020. Um, and we spoke a little bit about this yesterday. What level of accountability have, has the government shown? How you know different is uh, police you know uh, behavior in the last one year? In what ways have the police been able to have some level of reforms? In what ways have the police officers who air you know been able to be um, you know be to made to be made accountable for their actions? And it doesn't seem like a lot has changed. That really is what has led to more of these conversations this year. I drove past the toll gate this morning and, you know, I've been driving past the toll gate every day. And um, there is an increased level of police presence there again this morning, mostly to prevent people from gathering or to prevent any type of protest. And I also saw uh, a message saying that the Lagos State Police um, is saying that they, they would only allow online uh, protests and, of course, protests at, um, you know, from home, which oh, wow. I really don't even understand. Um, because what it means to protest not, online? Yeah, I really, I mean, yes, you, you can have conversations <laughs> online, you can necessarily protest online. There's other ways, you know, that you can, you know, have some level of protest. But, um, it, you know, I think it's also important to know that the, 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 the police itself cannot, you know, de cannot, you know, give orders whether there should be a protest or not. They're not the ones. It's, it should be the government. And, of course, there's still um, a, a court ruling that says that you don't need to even seek permission from government before a protest um, is held. So... Um, the events for today, I'm sure they're going to be very interesting. I want to see how they play out. Uh, we're going to have a, uh, having a correspondent on ground at the toll gate to also give us a live feed and give us some reports as to what exactly played out over there. Or is well, playing out there. It, you know, um, it's more look of an irony, if you ask me. The fact that we have increased uh, presence of you know, security 
forces around. One would rather think that the fact that you have this person on ground should be to protect because that's the way it is. Now, let's not forget that during the uh, protest, uh, one of the narrative that was being pushed was that, yes, it, it became, it was hijacked. But why should a protest be hijacked? Because on a normal day, I mean, in a normal day or during normal circumstances, you are expected to have the police. You are expected to have protection. You are expected to have that this protest should not go wrong. And that's where the police comes in. So um, it, it's really funny. And it is really an irony to um, say and to know and to see that you have presence of you know security forces just to ensure that the protest doesn't really happen in a democratic dispensation it calls for a lot of concern i mean it really really calls for a lot of concern now protest is a tool it's a universal tool if you like to say that has been used over the years in different countries you know to get government to act to to respond to the demands of the citizens and so it wouldn't be different this is not the first time i would even rather say that i mean we're actually embracing this you know it, it's it's rather late than never right because we have a lot of people who have gone ahead of us and we have seen that some of these countries have actually gotten you know several results so why are we different right, what's I, going I, on with us i, I it, think it's it, mostly it, the the nigerian government's um, attitude towards um, opposition or attitude towards um, you know anyone who disagrees with them and it's not just for protesting now even people you know on, on separate different political parties people who have counter arguments uh, concerning the Nigerian government anything anything whatsoever that the Nigerian government feels like they choose to do um, they have a particular attitude towards anybody who um, has completely discerning arguments um, um, about it. And that's what eventually has translated into some of all of this. Um, and it's also showing, really, the attitude of the Nigerian police itself uh, towards the respect to the fundamental human rights of the Nigerian citizen. Um, they have completely, completely uh, forgotten you know, what their responsibility should be and the, the roles that they should have in society. And this you know, covers every single ramification. If you've been to a police station, if you've had discussions with the police, if you've been stopped at a checkpoint, every single you know, way that you can be described, um, you can really tell that they really almost don't have any idea what their responsibilities should be and how you know, they should always be able to respect the rights of the, of the Nigerian that they are paid to protect. And, and so, that's what eventually plays out here. Hmm. So you begin to ask the question uh, of how many times you have training and retraining. And I'm sure that, you know, one of the major reasons, because if you also look at the Internet and the discussion that's been going on for the past, you know, 20 days up until this moment, you find that, that one of the discourses is the fact that uh, people are asking that, you know, the police, there should be a reform in the system. And the reform, apart from the fact that they're asking, yes, grab a particular arm, which is, you know, that of the SAS, but necessarily they are saying, uh, if you look at the condition of the Nigerian police, I mean, if you look at the welfare, it, it, just look at, just look at, you know, a typical police officer. It, it doesn't really look good. I mean, first of all, you ask, uh, how are they faring? I have been to the barracks, you know, where these people reside, and it's really nothing to really write home about. Not, it's not something to be proud of. And so these are some of the concerns that Nigerians actually, you know, took to the streets. On, you know, that on, behalf of the police. on behalf of the police. And so I'm wondering why they do not understand the narrative and all of this is actually going on. Now, it also brings us back to the question of when people begin to campaign, because the elections are here again. 2023 is very close. As much as we say, oh, 2023 is very far off, but it's very close. I'm asking, what conversations are we having? What are we talking about? What leaders are we looking up to? Because we, it's high time we begin to um, understand that we need to elect leaders who would represent our interests, not leaders who would feel that, you know, when they get into the office, you know, everything that they say, uh, we begin to take them uh, for what they say. Yeah. So uh, it, it's, this is the time we begin to have all of this conversation. It is really, really sad, and it, it, it saddens me. Today is usually, every time I look at the news and I look at all of those clips, I get very emotional, really, really emotional. And, so, I saw a, a, and I'm hoping a, a, a that... Um, CNN report, um, you know, that uh, was put, I think it was two days ago, where a woman was saying, you know, that her, her son died in her arms. You know, she had gone to the, uh, I'm not sure if you saw that. I saw, she had I saw gone that. there the next morning to Togate the next morning, and she had seen, you know, that her child had been shot in the chest, um, eventually died in her arm, and she had also seen other, you know, people who had been killed, um, you know, in the, 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 that morning. I think it was 5 or 6 a.m. the next morning when she went there. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm putting that out, you know, really to express the, some level of, um, to express the pain, you know, that people have had to deal with in the last one year. 
um, and you know just express some level of it. Of course, I can't in any way express you know to its to its full extent. But the level of pain that people have dealt with in the last one year. The thing you were talking about, you know, about you know how the protesters really and some of the things that they protested for was to have a better police force, to have a better um, uh, living conditions for the police, have better remunerations for the police, and some of all of that. Um, it might seem decent, but you know, um, like um, Sheung Kuti. Um, um, said sometime last year, um, he, he's not, you know, a party to, and I think I'm also part of that group, that I'm not, you know, a party to those who are campaigning for a better life for the police. They are human beings, they are adults, they are grown-ups. If they want a better life, they should be able to campaign for a better life for themselves. It is not the people that they have been killing, that they have been, you know, manhandling, that they have been abusing for years. The same police officers that you're campaigning for would, you know, treat you like dirt, if you ever find, find yourselves under, you know, um, in their cell or in, you know, behind their counter, as it is popularly called. So I'm not part of those people who's campaigning for police. Yes, police reforms. Yes, absolutely. Police reforms. And that should cover every single, um, you know, sphere of the armed forces and, you know, and the security agencies. Yes, there should be reforms. They should invest more in technology. They should invest more in, in better ways of carrying out criminal justice um, 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 acts. But... I have no business with, you know, <laughs> talking about, oh, they, they you go be, fix their barracks. That's their personal problem. And as adults, they should be able to campaign for themselves and say, we demand better living conditions. We demand better pay. It's not the same people that you have been abusing, that you still, look at the toll gate this but, morning. But Let's however, however um, that's also a reality because uh, some of the videos making... Uh, the rounds at this point in time, it's also uh, countering what the narrative that has been put out. Because, uh, I mean, during that period, you would also want to agree with me that there's a narrative that's been put out saying, oh, the protest is uh, destructive, so, so much of um, destruction. It's uh, been used, you know, to actually do a lot of crime, commit a lot of crime and criminality. But I have seen the videos where, uh, you know, this young protesters uh, open about about sharing more of a humanitarian angle. I think, I think you, you see them giving water, snacks, yeah. and all of that to the police officers and telling them, oh, this is what it is. And, so, and, so that and that's so... Um, that narrative was put out for a reason. And I'm sure you know the reason. The narrative was put out for a reason to... Um, you know, they say if you want to kill a dog, you, know, you give a dog a bad name you know, to hang it. Um, and that's the reason behind that narrative. Everyone who's been honest with themselves knows that the protest was largely, you know... 80%, 100% peaceful um, last year until very you know, the very end. Very decent. Know, very organized. You know, and you saw videos, you saw pictures of people cleaning up right after the I protested. even have a friend who was, I, I mean, I could see her. You, you just see you, some of these girls leaving their high horses and coming down yes. to the streets to pick the deaths. And after that, I was really, really impressed. And it was really, really emotional. And, and that really tells you the mentality of the people who came out to demand that the special anti-robbery squad, you know, be ended. And of course, that police learns, you know, about the, the rights of the, of the Nigerian. And, you know, they, they have complete police reforms. Um, um, that's really the mentality of those people. Um, every other person who was a part of the, the destruction, you know, that we saw eventually after the night of October 20, um, uh, basically, yeah, yeah, you can see those clips on your screen. Um, every other person who came out and, of course, was a part of that destruction was not in any way, you know, a part of the NSAS protest, had no business with the NSAS protest. I feel and like I they were planted. I, I feel like it was a deliberate attempt. You had another camp or you had another group of persons. You want to say the anti, those were against the protest because it wouldn't really be the same group of persons who went out there's asking. There's that. Yeah, there's, uh, that, there's, that, there's, there's, there's that narrative. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's still a failure of government. Two things that I'll point out, you know, as a failure of government. The first one is the fact that there's that many jobless people that have nothing to do but destroy because they don't have any. And so that's what they went out to do, to destroy. There's that many jobless people. There's that many violent people. There's a failure of government itself that, there's, that Lagos is filled. Because the destruction it, it mostly happened it, in Lagos. No, it wasn't all in Lagos. It wasn't all in Lagos. Across, you know, um, you know, the country, different states. You need to see oh, well, the level you, of destruction. Oh, well, if you're talking about the, yeah, you're breaking yeah. into prisons and some of all of that. Yes, absolutely. But it's same, same thing. Still a failure of government that has led to that many jobless people being readily available to destroy um, what they didn't build. That's one. And then second, when you declare a curfew, it's not the responsibility of the NSAS protesters to protect Lagos and protect the infrastructure across the state. It is the responsibility of the same police 
the same police that are paid with taxpayers' money. They're the ones who are meant to ensure that there is peace and there's quiet and there's safety and security during a curfew. So when you declare a curfew and all the policemen go to sleep and go to, back to their, their police stations and, and you know, don't do any work for the next you know, 72 hours, it's not the fault of the protesters, and you can't blame the protesters for that. It's still the failure of the Nigerian state and the Nigerian government to protect its um, you know, lives and property you know, that are within its territory. Now, if, if, if the narrative that's been put out there says you know the the protest was actually hijacked then like you rightly said it is very true because i believe that if there's going to be a protest then you ought to have the police which is responsible saddled with the responsibility of ensuring that you know uh, there is protection within the civil uh, society so yes uh, if the protest was hijacked where where the men of the Nigerian police force is another question you need to ask. And how come we don't have, because for every time you have a protest or people go out to protest, no, nothing, nothing ought to go wrong. Um, I mean, nothing should go wrong with all of that. You ought to have, um, you know, some level of protection to ensure that uh, the people who are protesting and these uh, peasants or hoodlums as they would be characterized, don't come in to hijack the entire process. But like you rightly yeah. mentioned, I agree that is a total failure on the part of government and and those who should do the need for. Well, um, once again, it's a really sad um, uh, discussion, you know, and I'll be honest, it's, it's you know, it's an emotional discussion, to be honest. Uh, there are certain discussions that I, I on, honestly wish that I didn't have to, you know, partake in. Uh, but these are important discussions and they must be spoken about uh, for justice, for fairness, for, for you know, the, the idea of moving forward and for a better society somehow, some way. We'll take a short break. When we come back, uh, Off the Press uh, begins, where we get to share with you major stories, making headlines across Nigeria this morning. And of course, we have uh, Anna joining us this morning. Stay with us.